We're live. How you doing, everybody? Welcome back. We're getting ready now for the final hour of trading here today on Quadruple Witching Hour, Friday, March the 19th. How you guys doing? Hope you're doing all right, getting ready for your weekend. Um, we are uh, keeping an eye on our Friday, favorite March shares out here to see what they're doing. GameStop has had a little bit of a run since we last uh, saw you. When I was last here, we were just in around the 190 something area, 191, whatever. Um, and it has uh, peaked out. It peaked out at about 223 um, at 12:36, and uh, it is now at 211, and it's just been jumping uh, here between this sort of oh 205, 206 range to 213 range, just last hour, half an hour. And uh, here we are, 211. Now, the question will be, is there any kind of momentum, uh, additional momentum going into the final hour with, with all this activity going on? The big markets are definitely moving around. Uh, the Dow is now coming on quite aggressively. It's it's now down 72 points. It was uh, quite a bit lower today. At one point, I think the Dow might have been down as much as 300 points at one point today. The low of the day, 32,505 for the Dow, 505. Right now it's uh, 32,773. So that's that's a 268 point recovery from the low. Um, <clears throat> very good to see. We'll watch how uh, the Dow uh, reacts. There's a lot of repositioning going on between now and the bell with uh, large, uh, large uh, 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 traders, uh, large institutions. There's a lot of institutional adjusting going on. Uh, typical at the end of the quarter for quadruple witching hour. A lot of these options are expiring. A lot of these futures are expiring. In the case of GameStop, to be specific here, and again, GameStop is not the big player in today's market action with respect to the quadruple witching hour. This, this is GameStop is not the leader of and will be the dominant story of the hour, <clears throat> uh, but it, it could get interesting because in the case of GameStop, there are, of course, options expiring today on GameStop. And this morning, when the shares were as low as 182, only the $180 options and lower strike price options for calls were in the money. Now, at 210, every contract up to 210 is in the money. Now, if this stock goes higher than the high it had today, which is 223 or so, 227, goes to 230, that would mean all the contracts up to 230 are in the money. So, the more contracts in the money at the bell today for GameStop, the the potential of more shares needed to be purchased by market makers in Chicago who have written um, GameStop calls, um, naked calls, written calls without owning the stock up front. So we'll watch this with, with very, very close attention. The volume on GameStop, 20,390,000 shares. So we're, we're much heavier than yesterday. Let's say that's okay. We'll go with that. But is it is it setting all-time records? No, and again, the the GameStop shares are not the uh, the shares of uh, that are leading this overall market trading whole thing. Not at all. It's just that the uh, the market is in the quadruple witching hour today, and we may see some whipsawing of averages. So by the way, the S and P is up twelve and a half. Nasdaq is up a hundred, and the Dow now down ninety nine. So we're 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 watching how this all. Uh, plays itself out. <clears throat> um, what else can I tell? Just double checking here on my uh, on my stats. Um, uh, trying to find. I wanted to find out if I could, um, if it's possible, uh, anything about volumes, but I don't think I can. Anyway, uh, the shares of uh, of GameStop um, two hundred nine thirty six right now. Over on our on AMC side of the equation, it's flatlining here at uh, thirteen ninety seven. And if I didn't know any better, um, I'm going to show you something here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, here we go. So this is this is the this is AMC right now. Now this is the opening here. Uh, it it was down on the opening to uh, 1328 down here, and then came back to the 14 range. Well, look at it. Look at it all afternoon here. Look at this. Do you think that there's a wall at 14 bucks on AMC? I mean, I mean this is unusual to see a stock. Flat line like that. It's it, a little dip and a little run, a little dip, a little run. It, it broke through 14, you know, a little here and a little there, but has not been able to get any traction. You kind of wonder, geez, 74 million shares traded on AMC and it just can't do it. Now, at this, while I'm speaking to you right now, it's taking a little dip here to 
1387 you can see that right there um sorry for my shaking hand here and all this but it's it's odd it is it is just an odd uh um there's odd stuff happening here i don't know uh <clears throat> you know why would a stock be absolutely not be able to break through 14 bucks why 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 not uh usually it would just you know like a like a sort of a wave you know the the radio wave we'll just kind of do that but this is like goes down and can't go up can't go can't go up can't go up can't go through there's a wall there 1387 right now is the last trade on amc 1388 i'm asking why i don't know i have no answer um it's the weirdest thing gamestop does not seem to have a wall it has been uh, free flowing along this was the opening this morning we were wondering if the stock would break the 10 percent rule this morning and didn't didn't get down to the 180 level and then here it is up here now um it is now sitting at uh, like i said got up to this higher level uh just over here 227 and then this afternoon a little slump back and now a little pop up now and we'll see what uh, what it wants to do between now and the close i i still wonder if there will be an attack on the stock i still wonder if we'll get one where the the uh uh you know the 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 uh, a certain hedge fund will take a shot at it we'll try to uh, we'll try to uh, uh, drown the market down get it down under 200 uh, perhaps even lower to try to have as few options in the money as possible this could be from the chicago side of the coin the the gamma squeeze people who want as few a number as options to be exercised as possible uh can they mount a, a charge um would they uh be able to either short a bunch of stock to drive it down because there is no sh there's no short sale restriction on the stock so it didn't happen this morning so they could hit bids if they wanted to or uh is there such a buy wave here is there so much wanted that they can't they, that uh, whatever you want to give us we're buying and they've already picked up 20 million from the sellers uh 20 million five hundred forty thousand have been have been you know traded which means that means buyers and sellers have conducted 20 million five hundred thousand in transactions uh and we're up 660 on the day nothing not a great run i mean you know it was like i said almost 20 bucks higher than this it was 25 dollars higher a high of 25 dollars on the gain for the day um would love to see it here and go higher than this but um it is what it is and uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll just see where this where this whole thing takes us uh 209 right now on game stuff 113 is the dow uh, the dow and 30 is down 113 points uh, s p is down eight point nine nasdaq down nine up sorry s p up nine points nasdaq up 96 but the dow is down 104 that's one third of a percent no one cares that is uh that is a dream scenario for uh the quadruple witching hour participants but it is not the end of the story at this point because we still have 53 minutes to go and we're probably going to see a lot of uh, perhaps a lot of whips activity on the markets um will it spill into gamestop and how and the option thing that's when i i await uh answers on okay thank you for all you who've uh, been popping in here wolfgang thank you for this uh, donation hey bruce in 2019 i had compiled some college papers into a freely downloadable pdf on gofundme uh maybe interesting um i don't know i'm not sure if that would be uh but uh, congratulations uh <coughs> i'm not <laughs> i'm not sure what what you mean by that i'm uh i'm at a loss um i'm like um i'm like the guy in uh, die hard the uh you know hans gruber I i'm at a loss uh, I, I have no idea what you mean. Uh, you have me at a loss. Uh, I know your name, but what is, you know my name, but what is yours? <laughs> Call me Al. <laughs> I love that movie. Oh, my gosh. Where are my detonators? Uh, let's see what is happening here. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> looking at the comments. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thanks for popping in to see me as we follow the last of the day um let's go david taylor thank you for your donation and coming by here uh good day uh captain bruce i have uh five grand ready to fire if the shorts try to drop again before closing bell uh, keep some ammo y'all for gamestop we can't let them win this um again we'll see uh, the big day is going to be next week when the uh when the uh, company talks publicly um uh, with the full blessing of their board of directors and the full blessing of their securities lawyers, 
they will be speaking. And this should be uh, most interesting, uh, what's going to happen here. Uh, Joker Robin, uh, Joker John Roberts, um, hey guys, does anyone know where to start if I want to start learning how to day trade? Uh, yeah, you might, you know, you might, you might just look up some YouTube videos and just do a search, like enter that day, how to day trade or day trading stock. You'll find some guys who are day traders and they record themselves. And although I don't know if they, if they do like day trading 101, uh, that I don't know. Albert, thank you for becoming a member of this channel. Albert, appreciate it. I'm glad you're here. Um, a number, excuse me, a number of you have joined this channel while I was off the air because I launched this show. I gave you the alert that this show is coming, and I think I did this alert over an hour ago. And so a lot of you have been talking for over an hour, just kind of watching the markets together, and a bunch of you have kind of signed up, become members. I can't, I can't tell you, uh, I can't give you the thumbs ups, I can't give you the shout outs because. Uh, too many messages have come and gone, and uh, and uh, your names have disappeared way back behind here. All these messages. So thank you, those of you who have come come on board to join this channel. Uh, you're able to uh, you're able to now comment on my live shows. You're able to do use emojis on the live show and use emojis, the special emojis we have on any comments on other videos I make. I did a video. I uploaded a video while I was uh, away. Um, check it out. It was uh, from yesterday's opening talking about these zero interest bonds that Ford and uh, DraftKings are issuing. Unbelievable. I did a, I, I popped that video up there. If you get a chance to check it out, let me know what you, what you think. I hope you like it. Give it a thumbs up. Um, that would be terrific too. Uh, I would appreciate, uh, appreciate that if you uh, would uh, do that as well. Thank you everybody. We, uh, we are uh, plugging away here following this uh, last hour of trading to see where we're going to end up. Almost 209 bucks a share on GameStop, 209.09 to be precise, I guess. And we are uh, we are uh, running along. We have 887 thumbs ups right now. I want to thank you all for just naturally doing this. You're just you're just throwing thumbs ups as we plug away here. It really helps the momentum of this channel and this this particular broadcast of this on this channel. Thank you. We want to get as many folks to follow this uh, witching hour as we can. Um, we'll be here for the final hour of the day and the first hour in the aftermarket to see what's happening after hours. This could be a most interesting after hours as well. Uh, we just hit a thousand thumbs ups as you guys are immediately responding to me, which you almost always do. We have 33 down, 1100 up. So we got a 33 to 35 to one ratio right now. And I would love to pound that even higher. So please keep those thumbs ups coming in guys and let us really rock this, um, the, the good to the happy to sad the uh, the um, the uh, lovers to haters the likers to dislikers ratio that would be great 1300 on the thumbs ups now thank you very much 1400 here they come thank you guys you are absolutely uh, youtubers dream come true I thank you uh, thank you to Barry <coughs> true <coughs> Trulio uh, <coughs> Um, uh, I'm not doing shout outs today, my friend, uh, although I do appreciate this uh, comment. Um, I'll, I'll pop this up later today. I will do this shout out for you, but I'll do it after we close the market. Uh, uh, I'm not advertising for shout outs at this point, but if you do want a shout out, it'll be in the last, in the last hour of the show, not, not this current hour. Too much going on in the market. 208 on uh, GameStop now. Um, and, uh, we'll, we'll just, just. Keep an eye on it all. The Dow now down 98. S&P up nine and a third. NASDAQ up 92. Um, and uh, we're waiting to see and keeping an eye for any wild swings in the marketplace, uh, whether anything pops up anywhere. Thank you, all of you, for coming by here and jo joining me. Uh, thank you to Mike Sims, uh, MYS, on, on got off the bus and asked, was this – Got off the bus and asked how my uncle Bruce was. Wholesome, love you, and just be you, Brucey. Th that, thank you, Mike. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, thank you. Uh, Fleecing Society. Bruce, were you part of a tax fraud scheme, Port of Canada, blah, 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 highlighted? Uh, no, I wasn't. Um, this is, th th there's a lot of speculation out there. People are trying to figure out, you know, what have I done in the past and where have I been and where have I gone? And Sharon, thank you for coming a member. Um, but it, it, my name does appear in a document um, because there was um, my lawyer, uh, who was a partner of mine, business partner of mine, and his law practice uh, at that time had 
thousands of clients and uh, there were many a court case going through the court system of any city you can imagine and uh, there were a number of individuals in uh, Vancouver uh, who were caught up in a, a scheme and they uh, they uh, were mentioned uh, but yet what this case referred to was some uh, a trust company having a problem with the tax uh, people in Canada the the, the CRA and uh, there was some some training going on or some supposed stock movement going on and for whatever reason um, because I was an associate or I was a client of this uh, lawyer and uh, he had uh, some clients who uh, who uh, knew these promoters somehow uh, the trust company who was on the hook for some tax issues they were reaching out to try to get out from underneath a, a ruling that had gone against them and uh, they were trying to bring to the court's attention that there's all kinds of people involved in 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 this whole thing and uh, how they got my name and they got the uh, they listed the secretary of the law firm they listed a bookkeeper for the law firm uh, like employees and then they they listed the lawyer um, uh, they listed um, uh, clients of the lawyer and all not to do with the actual stuff so in any event it's out there I can't make it go away I don't care it has nothing to do with me I've never ever had a an interview with anyone about anything and um, um, uh, I'm not sure how that all came out. Uh, th this is now, you're, you're quoting something from 2000, I think it is. To, yeah, you're 21 years ago. You're quoting something from 21 years ago. And so I can't even be specific with it because I don't remember it anymore. It is so far gone. Anyway, what can I say? But there are people desperate to try to dig up dirt on on me. And so they're just looking up, looking up, looking up. What can I say? Um, when, you become, uh, when you become a celeb, I guess, you know, um, you know, you're, you're linked with bagels. You, you get popular, and <laughs> it's the way it is. Uh, Wizard Owl, uh, thank you. How about an Uncle Bruce booze cruise with blunts and bagels going to Bermuda? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's me. That's my style right there. That's what I'm all about: blunts and bagels. This is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess on the bagel part, Jen says you're okay, but you're not you're not the blunt guy. Uh, definitely not. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, you don't need hair; just wear a beanie. They say uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that is means. Thank you, everybody, for popping on in here. Um, we are at two oh eight oh five on the stock. Um, we are uh, up down now one hundred sixteen on the Dow. My shares real or IOU entitlements? How to tell? What do you care, Mad Cow? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your stocks are. You are long stock if you own GameStop. That's it. You're you're long. That's it. That's all you have to worry about. And you can sell them anytime you want. Um, I'm guessing that for every uh, three shares that trade out there. Only one are is actually issued by the company. Two are are in, in a short position, floating around out there, and I'm waiting for that to be tightened up. And that tells me that the more of those that do get tightened up, the higher the stock price goes, because it just re restricts the number of shares to be trading around. It's like musical chairs, kids. Uh, we take a chair away every time we stop the music, and uh, they're walking around here, and it's getting tighter and tighter, and it's getting more difficult to find a place to sit down. I think we're going to have some fun here. A lot of fun. <clears throat> anyway, what can I say? <laughs> uh, Bruce, I honestly thank you for talking about the case. Uh, it's it's not a case. It's not a. It's a. I don't know what it is. I I don't. I don't know what it is, and I don't want to go there. Um, I'm not uh, not here to in any way talk about it because it, I ain't got nothing to do with me. Uh, so sorry, kids. Uh, Brandon Miller, uh, Bruce, ask before. Please explain. Shares available to borrow on GameStop. Um, uh, one million one hundred thousand three this afternoon. Only half a fee shenanigans. Uh, <clears throat> Brandon, <clears throat> I can't figure half of this crap out myself because this didn't exist. This this whole thing you're talking about right there, that whole thing about shorting, this didn't exist in my day. Uh, in my day, you knew as a brokerage firm how many shares you could lend a client to short stock because of how many certificates actual pieces of paper you had in your vault at the main branch of the bank in the town you did business in because most brokerage firms had their offices within a block or two of all the main bank branches. Now in our case, the, the firm I was with, we had our Toronto head office 
And then we had a Montreal office. We had our Calgary office. We had Vancouver office. And we had certificates in our cities as well. We we in Calgary had a lot of stock certificates to clear our Alberta stock exchange trades. The Vancouver guys had all the stock certs for Vancouver listed stock. Toronto had its shares. Montreal had theirs because we had exchanges in every city. And we as a, as a house, as a brokerage firm, we could tell, um, we could figure out pretty quickly how many shares do we have as a house, as a, as a corporate brokerage firm, national house, how many shares we got on whatever stock that we might be able to lend out if this ever needed to be done. Today, it's all electronic. It's all electronic. There are no physical certificates flying around anymore. They don't, they really almost don't print them anymore, really. They almost don't print them anymore. And so what we have here is uh, a scenario where the shares are trading and are being borrowed, but then we have uh, sellers selling stock <clears throat> who, brokerage firms, selling, allowing clients to sell stock that they supposedly have, but they don't have, and it comes time to clearing and they can't clear it. So they're allowed to do an IOU with the clearinghouse. And this has become the new normal in the last 10 years. This isn't like yesterday. This has been a while. But it's been a while since I've been out of the business that this has been going on. I haven't been a broker, stock broker, since 19, it's in 2000, or 99, 2000, 99, 2000, roughly. 21 years. Uh, that's the last time I actually was a broker. And even then, I was in the Cayman Islands, and it was uh, handled electronically. And our, our head office was in Bermuda, and they handled all the activity. And then they dealt with brokers in the U.S., and they handled all that. And so I was so so removed from this kind of stuff that I didn't have any didn't, any idea what was going on with it. I didn't need to know because I didn't have clients who were shorting stock. A typical, uh, in, in the marketplace when I was a broker back in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, uh, but in the 70s, 80s in particular, especially when I was in management, less than half of 1% of all transactions, if even that, maybe one-tenth of 1% of transactions that took place were short trades. It was almost unheard of it was extremely rare and um, uh, we had situations from time to time where like for example um, i would have an account for um, a publicly traded company and i was helping them maintain a market this is on the alberta stock exchange this is when i was uh, desk trading and then i was branch managing and we would keep up we would always make sure there was a buyer and a seller on the stock at all times even if it was only 100 shares on each side. These are the old days where stocks were trade between uh, 2 and $10 a share on the Alberta Exchange, dollar to $10 a share. And the president of the company would, 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 would engage us. They'd open an account for the corporation, and they would fund it, and they would put stock in there, and they would say to us, keep a bid and ask open for us, and all the trades we're doing, we need to file reports every month with the Securities and Exchange Commission. And the whole point of the account was to just be flat all the time. So if they were buying stock um, uh, because it was coming down and they would back off and let, they would always have a bid there uh, and other buyers would slowly come in and pick up some bargain stock. And then the market would come back up a little. The company would sell 100 here because they may have bought 300 shares coming down a dime. And now they're selling 100 as it comes back up a dime, sell another 100. And the whole point they wanted to be was, to be within a thousand shares long or short period but they would deposit ten thousand shares with us to start things off with and uh they might throw in a couple thousand dollars in cash just in case we need to buy stock first and we would always maintain a market now there were times what would happen where a market would, would take a run the stock would really go and, and the company would not know why the company doesn't know why is our stock up 20 cents today no we, we don't know but there's, there's buyers who are just looking to get more shares of the company, and maybe they're speculating on a future development. I don't know. So we would offer stock as it was thin on the sell side, if, if it was, and there would be times where we would now sell all the shares that we had in the account. And uh, we'd call the, the president up and say, look, we're, you're out of stock here, and there's a demand for stock you know, as it runs up, and there's not a lot offered. So we would start selling short, but we weren't calling it a short sale because – the president of the company says, I got 50,000 more right here. <laughs> I have a certificate in my hand. I'll deliver it over by courier today and just deposit it in there. But we only want to put 10,000 in the account. So I'll bring over 50,000. Would you mind um, uh, getting your cage to run over with the, the certificate to the clearinghouse, to the um, transfer agent, and have them break the certificate down into 
five ten thousand share certificates and then send us back the four ten thousand share certs and keep the ten in your account so it's like breaking a fifty dollar bill so that's what we would do it take a couple of days to do it though because the cert would come in and we would get it on a on a Thursday afternoon and and we would be selling stock Thursday afternoon and Friday morning and Friday afternoon we have five days to settle the trade we had five days so we were selling stock we didn't have in house but we weren't short with the with the uh, the uh, the uh, clearing house because we had five days to deliver we would take the cert into the transfer agent we would break it down into pieces and then we would come to the we would come to the clearing house on the the one week anniversary of the the trade and we would, de we would deliver the stock we needed to deliver. But yet we were technically selling stock we didn't have in-house physically that moment in time. Uh, no big deal. Uh, again, it, it, was, it was part of the business. It's part of liquidity. It's just the way it's done. But today, it's all over the map. I mean, today, the selling that's going on and the transactions that are going on are so complex and they're so... Um, um, you know, multifaceted with, with electronic trading um uh hedge funds can now trade with 25 brokerage houses at the same time on one stock portfolio's position as they're you know whipping stock in and out buying here selling here buying here selling here all over the map and and their computers are keeping track of it i mean even the physical people at the hedge fund can't keep track of the the, the minute to minute handling of all this it's a computer software program that's handling all these trades because they've typed in they've entered into the software the parameters of how they want to trade a specific security and it might be that they will not trade uh, more than one percent of all their transactions or five percent or fifteen percent with any one brokerage house on a daily basis it may well be that they have 35 accounts all over the street and they're spreading out three percent of the business to everybody and that's just the way they are and that's the way they're going to be because they're not beholden to any one broker with their specific rules or rules changes or margin changes or what have you and so they're they're, they're spreading it out spreading the business out it's like butter over bread you're just spreading it out and uh if this little chunk of bread falls off it's okay the other 97 percent of it's working over here we can continue on and so today for broker firms to keep track of how they're doing and how where they're at it's done by their computer systems in their what we call the cage the back of the back of the brokerage houses where the cage is that's where the securities managers are they're the ones tracking all the transactions that are being done by the house on behalf of the clients <clears throat> and they're trying to track where all these certs are we're going coming in leaving and where are we at as a firm so during the day the the hectic market that we're in here um the brokerage firm uh, has their computers constantly monitoring where they're at. The exchange is constantly monitoring where the shares are trading at. The hedge funds are constantly monitoring, and the mutual funds and the pension funds all monitoring all their transactions, trades. It's all done by computer. I mean, it's the silicon chip, man. It's all that. And uh, the so-called paper trail is is almost non-existent. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, and this means, of course, uh, you get stuff like this. You get these kinds of stats coming out saying, "Oh, there's all kinds of stock, and there's a there's a handling fee, a borrowing fee. You can order this, you can you can short that, you can borrow this, you can do that." Um, it goes around and around and around. Um, but at the end of the day, what's really going on, as far as I can tell you, <clears throat> when we get uh, when we request uh, reports just out of something as simple as Google, which isn't simple, but you go to Google and ask. Um, uh, who are the largest shareholders of GameStop? Um, you get a printout, you get a screenshot, and uh, you'll see that it might be as of last night, it might be as of last week, it might be as of the 15th of the month, it might be as of the first month, whatever it is. But you do a quick count and you're going, there's more than 70 million shares in all these institutionals, inst institutional hands. Uh, there's only 70 million existing, 20 million are held by management. Where's, where, who, 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 how, does they, how do they have all this stock? And that's where we're always doing this every day. I'm doing this every day with you guys going, how can they have all these shares if there's only 70 million existing? How, how can that be? Why is it like that? And uh, the congressional hearings are happening and no one has an answer. <laughs> no, one, no one actually poses the question. Have you ever seen a congressperson ask someone, why are there more shares trading than exist? And like, not just like 500,000 more out of 70 million. It's not like there's 70 million trading and there's, couple hundred thousand in flux right now no no it's like 70 million exist 
and it's like some reports are over 250 million are trading. How, how can you have 200, 400, 250 million shares trading when a company only has 70 million shares outstanding? Can someone answer me that? And I, I ask it. <laughs> and I don't know if a, a congressman asks it, but uh, I'd be kind of curious just, just, just how this works. Um, I'm kind of curious. Uh, second chance of life. Hey, Bruce, tell us again, how do I get membership? Junkies for Jesus, love you. Um, you, uh, you, uh, you might need to go to a laptop computer, go to my homepage, and find the join button right there, right, right there beside the subscribe button. It might be that simple. Um, your phone might be on a, I'm not sure which phone it is, I, I Android or iOS. One of those don't work. One of them doesn't work for memberships. So you have to, you have to go to my homepage. You can do it on your iPhone. You go to my homepage and then you go to, I was calling it Windows. It's not Windows. You're going to uh, some other platform and you'll find the join button miraculously appear and you can join. But if you do it on a laptop, it's probably the easiest way to go. Uh, a Apple computer, a, a, a PC will work. It, it, it does work. Uh, but for some, some of you are having trouble becoming members through your iPhones, uh, through your smartphones, whichever you have. And um, there's only, I, I can't give you the answers. Um, I'm not, uh, as you can figure out, I'm not the, uh, uh, I'm not the, uh, the, uh, Technical guy, unfortunately. Uh, Bruce, those questions were discussed in the latest hearing. You should look at their discussion. Uh, I don't have time. <clears throat> don't have time. <clears throat> but I'll try to find a recap this weekend. Thank you for all the knowledge you share, Bruce. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Led. Um, again, um, this whole short stop thing, uh, desktop mode, people are saying desktop mode, Safari, desktop mode, how to become a member. That's what we're talking about. All right. Thank you, guys. Desktop. Desktop. Um, this whole short selling thing is is just uh, it, it's a mystery of life, and uh, I think what the uh, what the clearinghouses have detected, and are detecting as each day is going by now, and as these markets are reaching higher and higher levels, and more cash is coming into the market, that miraculously a whole bunch of money comes into the market, and stocks don't really go up that much; they trade more but they don't actually rise in value. Where in the old days, <laughs> the 70s, uh, a whole bunch of money would come into the market and the market would really go up a lot. And uh, we're just not getting that now. And um, one has to wonder why. Talent Terror Gaming, thank you for being here. Um, Allura, Rene, thank you also for joining the, the club. Thank you very much. Uh, what, why is that? Why, why, why is it that a billions of dollars are coming into a market and it, 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 we're not getting markets going up like they used to go up. But why is this? And how is it that when you do simple Google searches for um, stock positions, it doesn't add up to the number of shares outstanding? It's like way out. It's not out by 10%. It's out by 200%. It's way off. Um, I can't get a I, – I, I don't know if there's a straight answer out there anywhere. I don't know if there is. Matt, can you describe your target audience? Uh those who are watching, uh, Teresa's mother, down to the down votes. I hope you realize how much good this will bring the world. Uh, please reconsider your position. <laughs> That's the way it is. Uh, Cav, um, I, 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 I am all the blockchain technology powering cryptocurrency will lead to, among other things, more transparent buy sell data. How would that hypothetically benefit the average retail trader? The blockchain technology powering cryptocurrency will, among other things, more transparency. Well, uh, Cap, uh, that's a. Uh, that's, I love the words you're using there. Um, you know what? Um, um, being old school, <laughs> I just I just ask myself, when will the SEC make it mandatory for um, um, for uh, for uh, institutional investors? Uh, to reveal their short positions, like they have to reveal their long positions. Why is it that a hedge fund has to tell us how many call contracts they have on GameStop and put contracts they have on GameStop? After all, if you buy put contracts, you're wagering that the stock will go down in value because the put will go up in value if the stock goes down. You have to disclose your call and put positions uh, under SEC filing requirements. But when it comes to the stock you own, you only have to disclose shares you're long in that you own. You don't have to disclose how many you've shorted. And I, I'm, I, no one is answering this question either. I don't get the answer as to why is it 
that all these institutional holders do not have to reveal their short positions. It's not like it's a hard thing to do. It's actually quite easy to do. It's just as easy as the long positions. It's just on, the, it's on their, it's in their computer. Every brokerage house knows every one of their clients' positions. <clears throat> and every, every uh, exchange knows the stock, uh, the stock positions of all the brokerage firms because they report to the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ or whatever. So the SEC has this info. They actually have how many shares, shares are shorted in each company. The brokerage firms know which clients, <clears throat> and the clients certainly know how many shares they're short, if they're short any at all. Why is it that it's not mandatory <clears throat> for a, a, a company like a hedge fund, a pension fund, a mutual fund, or ETFs uh, to declare their short positions? Cricket, you hear that? You hear that? There's, not, there's no sound there. There's no sound. That's crickets. There's no sound there. I, I don't. I don't know. I'm. Um, I've never. I've never known the answer to this question. I've never known. I've never. Not, and I have no clue what's going on with that one. Why is it like that? Because, <clears throat> as I wonder if if you're, if you're being recommended by brokerage house X, uh, by the analyst, by brokerage house whatever, to uh, they're saying that uh, company whatever is a strong buy. We like the company's growth prospects and their sales and their <clears throat> their over overseas sales are growing and their costs are dropping and all the good things that companies do. We recommend the stock because we think it can go from here to here in the next year. I, I would like to know uh, one couple things. Uh, the firm that, that that analyst works for, I'd like to know, um, first of all, of those shares you're recommending, how many are shorted and who is short them? Who, who short those shares? Are any of those shares being heavily shorted by any of your biggest clients? <laughs> have you got clients that are short this stuff? Or uh, you have no clients that are short this stuff? You don't have any clients to short the stock whatsoever, and you're recommending as a buy. But if I look at the short reports and I realize, well, there's 85 million shorted out of 100 million that exist, who's shorting it then? I then would love to know SEC filing reports that would show me who the shorters are. If BlackRock is a big shorter and uh, and AGF and and Tiger and, uh, and Tiger Investments and 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 various hedge funds are all short this stuff, I'd like to know why. Uh, maybe it's one of the more uh, uh, popular or well-known hedge fund managers that go on CNBC all the time. They love to be on camera and they're shorting the stock like crazy because there are short shorters out there who brag about the fact that they short stock. They don't they don't hide the fact at all. They openly discuss it but we can't verify the number through the sec filing systems so we have to believe these guys that that what they say they're doing they're doing um and it might be that yeah there's uh there's a hedge fund out there that is really short this stuff but they're the only one but they're giving the impression that there's a lot of people shorting this stuff and and it's not true i kind of like to be able to check this stuff out as as a prospective buyer of a stock that might be so heavily shorted it might be you know it might be a foolish move on my part you know bruce do you notice the bid prices of 78 or 79 shares consecutively where we're playing against computers i think what's your opinion yes we are uh we're always we and you well, you are i i'm commenting but yes uh there's all kinds of trading going on by by uh, automated trading um Austrian, they probably count the finra short reporting as as adequate we all know that it's infrequent, stale, um, and anonymized self-reporting data with a low penalty for inaccuracy. I, I agree. That's exactly right. <clears throat> and no one is identified as to specifically how many shares they're short. Talent here with the FCC declares, if the FCC declares that with the huge influx of floating shares with the correct, what it will cause the price to spike. If the FCC, if the, what is it? The, the SCC probably declares that, with a huge influx of floating shares, and we'll correct it and cause the price. Okay, so if uh, <clears throat> if the failure to deliver securities that are floating around out there, all those shares that haven't been delivered, that are today twenty one days overdue from the last from the settlement period from three weeks ago Wednesday, if the SEC determines that all that stock has to now be counted as shorted stock. How many would it be, and could that lead to a price move if the street really understood that in the case of GameStop, for example, um, 
the uh, for example, let me take a look here on my market watch uh, site. It says that there are uh, 70 million shares outstanding. It's right here. Uh, here's my market watch page, and this is the GameStop stock. You can see. Hang on, it's right there. 203.53 last last trade. Sorry, <clears throat> there it is. 203.53 last trade. Well, over here, uh, right here, uh, it says there are 69 million shares outstanding, just under 70 million. Uh, there are uh, there are. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm having too much fun here. There are uh, four, uh, 54 million 400,000 free trading right there. And then down here, it says uh, 14 million short uh, short interest representing 26% of the float. That's what this says here. Any of you guys can go to the site. It's a free site. Um, but that's not the real story. Uh, that that's that's a that is a picture of the situation. But that is not the real picture because we know. That a stock cannot trade some of some of the days. This trades some 170 million shares. It trades 200 million shares. Impossible for a company with only 54.4 million public float theoretical to trade that kind of one. That you, you just can't do that. Not day in and day out, a day in and day out. It's next to impossible. I know there's day trading, but this is ridiculous. Um, and we know the uh, we know about the failure to report because we we find those reports. We hear about those reports. Um, uh, so if they were to claim or, or they were to include failure to deliver stats onto declared shorts, because those to me are undeclared shorts, how high a number would that be? Would that be 65 million shares? Would that be 85 million shares that are actually uh, really technically short? Uh, how, how in the world can that be carried by the brokerage community if there's only 69 million in total existence? Uh, makes no sense, right? There you go. So, right, uh, wouldn't the wouldn't the Wall Street bets people jump up and down all over again and say, "Hey, this thing is going going to a thousand a share because of the short situation"? But if you don't force them to buy it back, I guess that's the other question, isn't it? If these guys aren't forced to buy it back, uh, then what will cause it to go up? I mean, how many more can you keep not not delivering? Uh, what's the number? Is it bottomless pits? I don't understand. I'm worried I'll miss out because I can't find a member's tab. Um, uh, uh, Brian, like I said, um, um, uh, there's there's ways to do this, and 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 your phone might not be the best way to become a member of this channel. Uh, uh, try out try a laptop and and see what that will work for you. Future gamer millionaire the third. I think it's funny that when Citadel bailed out Melvin for 2.7 billion, they they said they had happened because Citadel had been inquiring about being being becoming an investor. <laughs> yeah, the day after, uh, or the same day, they needed three billion to get bailed out uh, from their short losses. Yeah, it's funny how that works. Yeah, we we have great faith in these guys. We want to be an investor with these guys. Um, it just so happens they need three billion dollars right now to rescue <laughs> rescue themselves from a nightmare that they've got themselves into. But you know, that's another. We're we're not going to go there. Okay. Um, uh, T. Brucey Doc says if I keep eating so many barbecue beans, my farts will become thermonuclear. <laughs> I disagree. Worst, uh, uh, the worst I've done is burn holes in the chair. What's your view on this? Will my explosive flatulence do us all? Doom us all. New source of energy. Uh, Jen thinks it's a new source of energy. Uh, maybe you know, good for the planet. Maybe this might work out. I don't. I don't know. Uh, oh man, uh, bringing you know the, the whole reason to wear a mask. Another reason to wear a mask. Um, Kim uh, Crywalt, maybe uh, because long positions equal a quantifiable threat market force, but shorts are liabilities. Easy to target rivals with that info. Policy calms the market. Yeah, I, I, you know, I just, uh, I don't know. I, I think that uh, that uh, that if these shares traded, uh, there were only seventy million floating, and seventy million were actually changing hands, we wouldn't be anywhere near two hundred two ninety five. No way, and and that would run the market higher, which could then bring the stock back down because people might go, oh, it's not worth that much. I'm not going to pay that high. Uh, right now, it's a liquidity game. Uh, pay per pay per pay per trading, uh, uh, pay for volume is the is the secret uh, sauce for the brokerage houses these days. These days, it's all about volume. That's what they're after is volume, volume, volume is what it's going to work. What's going to work out for them? Um, Loj at one k has become a member of the channel. Uh, thank you for joining up. Um, I don't know, guys. It is it is the the mystery of life. I have to say, Megan Fees has also become a member. 
thank you folks for finding your way to becoming a member of this channel. However, logistically, you have to do it. I'm glad you, you figured it out, and I hope it is not too hard for you to, to do it. I know some of you are really frustrated. You're writing me privately going, I can't figure out how to become a member of your channel. I don't know what to do. Uh, so I, I come up with my uh, two bits worth of advice, and I just pray it works. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you, everybody, uh, for for attempting to become a member. And those who are making it and succeeding, I, I, I welcome you with open arms. 202.15 is the price of the stock right now. We're down to 15 minutes to go in the day. Uh, two, two, is, it, is it being brought down here on purpose, systematically, um, just, you know, a dime every 30 seconds or something? I don't know. Is there, a, is there a program that's been entered by a computer into a computer at a hedge fund or two, and they're just slowly piecing off stock, and they're hitting bids, and they're bringing this market down? I don't know. It's only up 58 cents on the day. The stock was up $25 a share today, midday. Do you think this is highly unusual trading? Um, does it look normal to you? Uh, I wonder. Hmm, this is being messed with here. Um, all those options that were in the money, they were in the money at 225. I had people writing me the other day. You may remember some of the messages I was getting. I have $230 call contracts. What should I do? They expire tomorrow. What do I do? Do I hope that the stock takes a run? Then what do I do? Uh, you remember? Uh, here we go, 201.90. Uh, we got people here who are about to be uh, way out of the money that were at the money earlier this afternoon. Um, is this is this real or is this uh, is this imaginary? What's what's going on? Are these real certificates that are being used here, or is this all uh, digital certificates that don't uh, that are not able to be delivered upon completion of this settlement, which is Tuesday? Uh, I don't know. Uh, your buddy Bruce, your uncle Bruce is doing the best he can to follow this. Uh, buddy, uh, buddy Rourke uh, became a YouTube member. Thank you. Uh, future game mill. I got an idea. Let's make high frequency trading publicly available to everybody. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, open open up the uh, open up the info, folks. Um, let's see what's going on. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's see them whales. Uh, Colin, you got humor. Uh, is this real or fantasy? Caught in a landslide. Uh, GameStop. Count all the shares. Uh, the short covering game has become 5D chess. I hope they get exposed somehow, but I'm less and less optimistic. I still like GameStop stock. I'm in GameStop through 2021 at least. Pass the moon and let's aim for Mars. Uh, they keep trying to hold it around 200. Isn't it amazing? Uh, it is amazing. 203.84 at the moment, a little bit higher, but you got to wonder uh, what is going on. We're down to uh, 13 minutes to go. Diamond-handed, Aptard, uh, you, you can computer trade with... Uh, with TSHFT, a whole uh, whole other very expensive animal. You need to pay for quants, math programmers, and they're rather expensive, exactly. And uh, there are firms out there that handle these kinds of uh, um, these kinds of uh, these kinds of transactions, and it's quite amazing. I don't know what's going on, folks. Um, <laughs> they say pills and alcohol helps. Mike, I'm forced to sell open Monday. This this sucks. Uh, I, I'm not sure what that quite means. Um, they've got all the equipment and access to the exchange network. Uh, someone is saying it's 204 right now, 203.59. Um, and uh, uh, here we go. What's the chances that longs know that the shorts bought in the money call options and are purposely keeping us low so they can't exercise? Uh, okay, so a hedge fund is short. They need to cover. They bought in the money calls at 220 this afternoon. The market now is 204. The 220s are out of the money. Uh, if they exercise those, they, that would be rather silly because they can just buy the stock at 204. Uh, so they're out a lot of money. They're going to die worthless this afternoon, depending on how much they paid per contract, right? Um, and so maybe there are hedge funds that are purposely driving the market down to ruin their their plan, their master plan, to cover their short by buying in the money calls. Uh, that we're at 210 or 220. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm kind of thinking that if I'm a hedge fund, I would be buying $150 calls. So I would be way in the money because at the end of the day, I buy a 150 call and it costs me $75 or $85 a share. Uh, it's 150 plus 85 is 235. I'm covered at 235. On the other hand, uh, I'm now thinking, well, geez, you know, I bought them down there and the stock's at 203. I'm, I'm, I'm really upside down just on this deal. But um, I don't have to go chasing the potential of 100,000 shares or 300,000 shares or a million shares or 5 million shares on the open market starting Monday morning. So maybe uh, I'm better off letting this happen 
it's a complicated game. As you are beginning to figure out, you watch me for a while and you realize, man, it's just not as simple as buying and selling stock, is it? It's just not as simple as buying and selling stock at all. Kind of having fun here. Always having fun. Um, okay. <laughs> These are good questions. Uh, that's Queen Bruce. Uh, you, you didn't get my reference. Oh, actually, I did, but I didn't know it was Queen, but I, I recognized the lyric. But I thank you. Probably better to just buy the shares. There, that If you can get them, so, you, you got to be somebody uh, or have a ton of money or it won't happen. Um, what else we got here? Um, uh let's go go let's go let's go let's go let's go let's go um uh, and and ain't not looking good GameStop bag holders um let's see conservative does jen own stock no looking forward to our one-on-one -on, -one on april 3rd i want to rock yeah jen doesn't own anything um mm -mm, she owns me uh she's she's got me figured out that's for sure uh i'm, I'm trapped i'm trapped i can't get out uh <laughs> Uh, Bruce, what was your first job? Uh, cleaning around the house, working at my dad's music store. That would have been my first job, uh, working at my dad's music store uh, at age uh, nine. Nine, yeah, starting at nine, ten, ten years old, roughly. 1964, 65, working at my dad's music stop, music shop, cleaning, uh, uh, sweeping the floors, vacuuming up, um, uh, cleaning the glass counters uh, with Windex and towels and dusting guitars and the drums and the amplifiers just cleaning up the store and then on inventory days like uh, new year's day would be inventory day so we would be in the store on new year's day counting the inventory for the shop uh, although i think my dad eventually changed his year end maybe march 31st so it would have been april 1 or something we would have a we would pick a sunday and uh, he would pick a sunday to be uh, to be uh, inventory day just a day or like a day or two before year end or day two after and they would adjust the inventories based on the sales that were being made or going to be made for the couple of days uh and i remember counting all the inventory with 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 a whole bunch of volunteers that helped out a whole bunch of friends of my mom and dad would help us out because we had to count the inventory of this music store in one shot and my dad would be uh, the director general with the clipboard and the paper and the cal and he'd have uh, his pen and and we would just he would just point and uh, how many of those um, uh, chords for microphone chords? How many of those we got? How many good? How many guitar electric guitar chords? How many pairs of drumsticks in that holder over there? Uh, guitar picks uh, ballpark uh, twenty five bucks worth good enough. But guitar picks were a dime a piece. It didn't matter. But strings, guitar strings, sets of strings. How many we had to know exactly because it was. Thousands of dollars in strings. We couldn't believe. I couldn't believe it. bass strings, guitar strings, violin strings, cello, um, stand-up bass. Oh my gosh, we had inventory for just about everything. It was it was a music store. What do you want? Musical instruments. We had it all. Parts and and uh, to get the instruments themselves and all the little stuff. But we got it done. Got it done. Usually about five or six of us, and we'd have the whole thing done in about four or five hours. And then my dad would sit in the back of the store. Uh, that day or the next day and he was just working on his adding machine which was the size of a bread box today uh, the adding machine my dad had was a big unit that was about 18 inches long and about a foot high and about eight nine inches wide and plugged into the wall and it could it could add subtract multiply and divide and that was it <laughs> and he was he would he would even look at it. He would look at the numbers. He'd go da 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 ching da 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 ching da 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 ching da 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 ching da da ching. Then he'd know he'd make a mistake, and he'd go ah uh, back 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 back. Okay, da 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 ching da da ching. And he would he would hit the subtotal total, and he would rip off the tape off the top of the thing, and he would look it all over, make sure it was all right, and he would have his numbers. Unbelievable how he did that. I don't know how uh, that that world doesn't exist anymore. Um, and then the auditor would be brought in once a year to audit the books that my dad was keeping. And the auditor would go, uh, Mr. Frommer, uh, you're <laughs> it's so easy to do your books because you're so damn good at it. Uh, but he prided himself on being a very good bookkeeper. And uh, he knew exactly where his business was every second of the day. And if he were alive today to see what I'm doing here, uh, he would be blown away by the numbers that are going by the screen all the time. He'd, he'd be amazed at how many people are watching me live, how many subscribers I have, uh, what the counts are per video I make. 
He'd, he'd be analyzing them for me. He'd be coming to me going, you know, if you, uh, if you did more of these and those, you'd have more views. And uh, <laughs> he'd analyze it. The analytics he was into so much. Oh, my gosh. And uh, I have a little bit of that in here, of course. Uh, uh, but, uh, but he was the master. It was unbelievable. Wally, the GameStop fuel is in place. Uh, we got six minutes to go. The fuel pile will grow exponentially after next Tuesday at 5 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Who has the only match in existence to set it off? Good question. 204, 203. We seem to be sitting at right now in the stock, waiting to see the last uh, four minutes. Uh, we're watching the uh, whatever's happening in the witching hour. 144 point drop on the Dow now. A uh, six point gain on S and P. 114 point gain on Nasdaq. Um, we're watching to see what uh, what's happening on on any. Uh, Activity on the markets. Um, I'm not seeing a lot. Um, uh, AMC 1398 cannot reach $14. It cannot get to 14. There is a wall on AMC. There it is trading at 14, but there has been a wall on AMC all day here. Something is up there. I don't know what's going on. Um, and the volume on AMC has been a paltry 95 million. That's light for this stock, light for the stock. Um, uh, investors poured in a record $56.8 billion into the stock market funds as stimulus checks arrived. And I think there's a lot more coming. We're not even done yet. Um, we're going to see what has happening here as we close out these last few minutes of the day. 151 point drop, 157 point drop on New York. We're getting a little active there, but we're down to three minutes or so as we finish it off. I'm, of course, concentrating on the GameStop. For you guys, um, 202 on the stock. Uh, volume today on GameStop is of 22.4 million. It's better than yesterday, uh, but it's not a record setter. Uh, but it wasn't really, GameStop wasn't expected to be the leader. The Dow now down 178, uh, taking a bit of a hit. Uh, now, uh, S&P down three, Dow now down 181 as we're coming into the last few minutes. Lots of Portfolio moving going on here, portfolio trading. Um, uh, DMG investigates Visa over debit card practices. That's a headline. Uh, three minutes, 25 seconds left to go in the day now as we are coming into the last uh, few minutes of the day. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. Uh, 2,200 thumbs ups. I appreciate that very much. Keep them coming in. Um, and uh, thank you to uh, some of you, uh, all of you, a bunch of you here. Who have been so good to me this week, man, man, oh man, you are amazing. Misled uh, with these recent hearings, do you think that the real change will come in terms of transparency in your experience, or is it just a show? I would love to believe that. I really would. Uh, hello, fellow kids. Melvin says I'm definitely not a manager at Melvin. I'm just wondering what would get you folks to sell your GameStop shares. Please help me out. Uh, something tells me uh, much higher prices would be my, you know, my first guess. <laughs> if I had to, if I had to guess for the folks who are here. Uh, would have to be some pretty high numbers on the stock. No more than four is a new member of this channel. And thank you, no more than four, for coming around here. appreciate that. We're at 201.94 on GameStop. And uh, we've got, uh, uh, let's see here, another week, more fuel. Uh, BlackRock, keep over 200. Um, let's go. Uh, uh, so here, I'll sell at 69000 $420 a share. That, that's the price I want. There you go. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, shill, someone says, AMC hit 14. Yeah, it touched it. It's now 1383 again. Uh, amazing. I love that. Uh, see, sell game stuff. It's easy. Just get to 1,000. We can start talking. Um, let's go. Uh, two minutes holding. We're coming into the, the very end of the market now. Very end. The last few moments. And uh, advances 1,800. Declines 1,400. Uh, not a lot happening. Uh, one minute, 39 seconds. New highs, 130, 45, 145 highs, 102 lows on the NASDAQ stats. Kind of a, you know, it's an update, but not a much of an update. The, the NASDAQ is up 109 points, down, down 181. And uh, we've got a minute and 23 seconds left to go. Um, the Dow lower for the second straight day, says the folks at CNBC, down 197 on the Dow, $200.86 on GameStop, down 88 cents. Looks to me like they're trying to hold this $200 level and just keep it there. That seems to me to be the, uh, the, the hunch that I have on it. A minute and three to go. Um, 200, 201 right now is where it seems to be drifting at. 
uh, with a volume of only um, 22.6 million shares. Games uh, AMC 1392, uh, just not able to um, mount a charge to go anywhere. It's it's off six cents. I mean, it's not down anything serious. It's just it's just been flatlined all afternoon. Uh, like there's there it's like it, look at that right across there. Look at that line right there. That stock cannot get over 14 bucks a share. That that's it's just it'll get there, but then it backs off and it gets there and it, it gets whacked back down again. Uh, that to me looks artificial. That looks to me like someone is selling a lot of stock and has got a big sell order up there, and their the nibblers are coming to nibble at it, but they can't get rid of it. They can't take it out. The bell is going right now on New York. Uh, the uh, the GameStop is at two hundred dollars a share. Uh, last trade at the close, I'm showing here. 202.44. It just snapped in. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that, see if that is actually where it will hold. 202.44, last trade on GameStop, telling me that all $200 call contracts or lower are in the money. Um, and that is down from last week, I think. Um, higher than a few weeks ago, definitely. But uh, 202.44 is where we were at the high of the day, two hundred twenty-seven dollars. So that was that's down twenty-five dollars from the high of the day, just around two thirty in the afternoon. The Dow lost more ground at uh, at the end, two thirty-three on the downside. I think they're waiting for the final prints to come through. Down two thirty-four, they'll still adjust it. S and P ended up losing two point six points on the last uh, few minutes of the witching hour. Uh, Nasdaq held on to a ninety-nine point gain. As everyone was averaging and and, and figuring out their uh, their portfolios, um, okay, we'll watch for we'll watch for more activity here now in the aftermarket. The aftermarket for uh, GameStop right now one ninety nine seventy five is the actual moment. To this this trade at twenty five thousand traded in the aftermarket right now at one ninety nine ish. Uh, we'll see where that uh, settles in in the next few minutes and watch for that. Um, 0.7% drop on the Dow, 0.07%, 0.07% drop on S&P, and a 0.76% gain on NASDAQ. Oil gained a buck 50 to 6152. There was a report of some kind of a Saudi oil installation that was attacked or something or something like that. Uh, I don't know if uh, somebody wanted to promote that to kind of get the oil up a little bit or – whether it was a serious problem, uh, you know, in the old days, back in my day, <laughs> 70s, 80s, that kind of a headline would make oil go up 10 bucks a barrel. Just uh, people would be panicked because Saudi Arabia was, you know, the swing producer. Without Saudi oil, the world would stop because we have become so addicted to the Middle East crude. But uh, things have changed in 40 years right now, uh, really changed in 40 years where uh, uh, North American production, Russian production, and other countries' production has really surged. And uh, the world has become much more efficient with regards to how much oil it needs. Uh, Saudi is no longer the swing producer that it once was. And uh, if these guys really wanted to run the market, the Saudis would actually have to probably go down to 50% production. Uh, but even then, that, that would be replaced by increased production out of the States and Russia, I bet you. On the other side, I, I don't know if the Saudis, even if they went to zero, would be able to cause much of a move. Maybe maybe a, a shock move, but I mean, over time, I don't know. <clears throat> Things have changed a lot. 199.62 on uh, GameStop at this moment on the aftermarket. Mm, there you go. Uh, this is why I was so scared of playing options this week. Cav is saying it's a freaky Friday, um, and it was uh, uh, intense volume movement in the last 15 minutes, like I thought, uh, says uh, – says uh merkin merkin um melvin enter let's work together 25 dollars a share sound good um <laughs> we're at 200 dollars a share now on gamestop 200 dollars on the aftermarket right now amc on the aftermarket is at uh 1364 down 21 cents it closed at 1385 and it's now 1364 so it's taking a bit of a hit here uh the low of the day though was 1328 so this might be just a temporary glitch on AMC, but it did not have a good day today um, on its own. It was uh, definitely uh, running into a wall ever since about 11.30 this morning until virtually the close. There was virtually no way this stock would get over 14 very much. 
it would just run into a lot of paper and would just come back and sit right under there at 1398 1397 1399 for a lot of stock 99 million traded uh not uh, not a heavy day for amc but definitely not a uh, not a good looking chart today that's telling me there's a big seller trying to sell out and i, I wonder who is it is it the chinese seller are, are they are they walking away at 14 bucks they got 50 plus million. Are they taking 700 million off the table? Uh, I would have thought they would make they would make a deal or they would use a broker that would find a buyer to do block trades where they would just block trade out 10 million at a time here, 5 million at a time here. Maybe they can't find one and they're just offering the paper. I don't know. Cannot say. Um, uh, the option holders for a GameStop just got wiped out. If you had a $15 call, a $14 call, a 15, a 16, you're wiped out. You got zero because they expired this afternoon. You have no premium. You lost it all. And and maybe maybe this uh, this seller, maybe this is Chicago offering stock, and they won't let it go over 14. I, I'm not saying it is, but I'm wondering if it is. And is is the same thing for uh, GameStop? Did the same thing happen with GameStop uh, as the market came back to the 200 level towards the end of the day? Was that the plan? I I don't know. I don't know. Uh, someday someone write a, Someone will write a book. Someday, and we'll see where where it's at. Uh, anyway, lots of uh, lots of interesting things going on here. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I would not start with options, says Diamond uh, Diamond Handed. I, I agree with that. Uh, I would not start trading with options. KW, uh, these people don't want their shares back. Uh, that maybe that's it. Um, GameStop finished in the green. Uh, yeah, sixty nine cent gain. That's right. It did. It did have a a, a green day today of sixty nine cents. I. I don't know. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mark, well, this is the last time I spend all day watching the market. I'm just going to relax during the day. Uh, good luck with that, uh, Mark. Uh, easier said than done sometimes um, because I can tell you that from about 11.15, 11.30 until about uh, 12 o'clock, uh, my email was just exploding. People going, "Have you? are you watching what's happening with this thing? Your stock, the stock is going, man. Uh, you may want to get back on the air. We're up to 225 here. Um, yeah, it, things were things were kind of interesting for a while there, and we're kind of wondering if we're about to see that again on a much greater scale now that we're through quadruple witching hour, and we're getting ready now for the GameStop financials, the year-end financials with that conference call coming up this week. This could be a most interesting time. I, I'm Kind of, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm looking at the heat map of the market, says Cap. Uh, for the most part, sectors finished green, but S&P tanked in the last 15 minutes. Hypothetically, what could be inferred with today's overall market movement? Yeah, well, um, S&P could well have tanked in the last 15 minutes due to a whole bunch of uh, adjustments being made to the marketplace. Um, let me just double check here if I can pop it up over here. Uh, there we go. S and P 500. Um, yeah. Oh, did it ever? Uh, it went from uh, something like uh, what is that? 30, 32,760. So set from 32,760 all the way down to uh, 617. Uh, that's a 150 point drop on the S and P 500. That is that is significant. That is uh, that is uh, that is interesting. Is I'm gonna make sure I got that right here. Make sure I got that right. I don't want to be wrong on this. Yeah, it looks like it. Um, uh, it took it took a bit of a dump there, didn't it? Interesting. Um, anyway, um, closing at thirty nine thirteen. Uh, did have a bounce back though uh, towards the end, but it had been lower to thirty nine eleven and uh, came back a bit. Uh, yeah, th sorry, thirty nine twenty seven. Sorry to thirty nine eleven. That's sixteen point drop. That's significant on on this on a, an index. Of this size but in any event um, it won't mean anything in the long run really because we continue on on Monday with with uh, where the uh, Marcus left off uh, but at the end of the month will be interesting because we'll have uh, month end adjustments being made with respect to uh, hedge funds uh, but mainly mutual funds pension funds and index funds those ETFs and uh, and others there will be a lot of adjusting to be done on the 31st of March which is a Wednesday a week from Wednesday. So that will that'll tell the first quarter will come together. We'll see what's going on. 7 billion in uh, Apple and 1.6 billion in Google sold in the last minute of trading. Whoa. 
serious money handling handling over there. Uh, future uh, games a million. Those are numbers from Finra yesterday. Short volume twenty nine uh, two point nine million. Uh, short exempt volume fifty one thousand. Total volume uh, four point eight. Uh, market equals BQN. I, I don't even know what half of that means. I, I, I'm, uh, it is so complicated. I, I think that changes second to second, trade to trade, uh, house to house, you know, hour to hour. Hard to hard to put a finger on this on this stuff. It's very tough to uh, to make heads or tails of it. Anyway, we'll see what's uh, what's going on here. Uh, well, we're hooked on. We're hooked until thirty first of March. Anyway. Uh, we'll see where we go from now to then. Um, hologram. Thanks, Bruce. Awesome shows today. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. We're going to watch the market for the next uh, 50 minutes and see where things go from here. Um, I promised Barry I would do a shout out. Uh, thanks, Barry, for uh, for uh, uh, coming by. Thank you for a, uh, a donation to my channel. Um, I don't know if I can get your message in, though, because it looks like it's too long uh let's see what we got here oh is it ever too long um anyway um uh, here we go let's see if i can maybe make this adjustment um i haven't been doing much in the way of shout outs this week because of all the craziness on this channel as you folks know and i wanted to uh really just concentrate on where we're at here regarding uh you know what's happening going forward and uh, uh i want to thank you all of you for you know becoming becoming part of the thing, becoming part of the deal. Um, I can't give out phone numbers, so I'm going to take that phone number out. Um, but we've got the .com address right there, so we'll pop that in there for you. High Priority Delivery is the premier cannabis delivery service in San Diego, servicing Pacific Beach, Mission Beach, Ocean Beach, La Jolla, and Claremont. Check out highpriorytydelivery.com. There you go. There's a shout-out right there. No, no phone numbers, really. I can't do that. Um, and thank you to, uh, thank you to, uh, uh, Barry again. Great show to Bruce. Can you tell the apes of my friends company now? I, I did that. Yeah. Thank you, Barry. We got you in there. Thanks buddy. Uh, for that. Have a great weekend, Barry. And, uh, good luck to you and your buddy there. Make a lot of money and uh, enjoy life. Um, thank you guys. Uh, and, uh, we'll see what happens this weekend, uh, uh, with, uh, with, uh, any contacts that I'm going to get from this uh, Netflix, uh, 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 thing uh, that we kind of need. I, I see a message here. I'm gonna have to get back to it. We'll see what's going on there. Uh, thank you. Also, for those of you who have been giving me thumbs ups and and, and shout outs, thank you for the thumbs up. 2,400, 2,400 thumbs ups have come in. 97 on the downside. So we're a 24 to one ratio. Uh, thank you all the thumbs ups for that. If you can add to this, I would so appreciate it. Uh, we are uh, we're like I would love to get us to uh, 5,000 thumbs ups before we're done this show tonight. Uh, that would be a great way to go out this uh, into the weekend. We're at 2,500 right now. 2,500 right now. We got a 25 to one ratio between like and dislike, and I would sure love to see that like number really take off. There's a bunch of you here, and if you could kindly hit that thumbs up number for me, let's drive that number right up there. Uh, it should e be easy to get it to 3,000, 4,000 for sure. Uh, but thank you guys so much for. Uh, for everything you've done for me 2600 now there we go they're coming in thank you guys uh very much appreciated um what else is going on here um uh over to stream here uh, uh stranger stocks coming to netflix starring bruce <laughs> we love uncle bruce just uh, just keep holding people or buy that's cool too have a great weekend everybody uh time for a beer somewhere uh, thumbs ups for Bruce, uh, Wizard Owl, uh, haha, -ha, thanks. Um, and uh, uh, Thomas, uh, she won't be confused when you're w watching it on your yacht. A uh, <laughs> lot of private message beginning to, to pop up here, which is great. A lot of you talking to each other, which is fantastic. Uh, yeah, I hope you're finding this site to be a safe place to hang out, and I'm, I'm enjoying it. Enjoying your company. I hope you're enjoying mine. And uh, 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 what is this here? Uh, uh, we, we Okay, time to get down to business. We need on Redbubble an Uncle Bruce Bagel Believer Terrible Towel. Jen will know what this means. Oh, she knows. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to her about this later. She's, she's got her headphones on right now. She's working on something. So I'll, I'll mention something about that. We'll see what we could do there. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> Eduardo, after I get my GameStop tendies, I will still follow you. But uh, in my TV, sitting in the in the couch, I'll be with my television. Relaxed. I'll be much more relaxed, Bruce. 
Uh, there you go. Uh, just keep things simple, simple, simple works consistently, complicated, not so much. Uh, fantastic. Uh, Zena, those will be settled Monday, Tuesday. Um, let's see here. Uh, Coffee, thank you for becoming a member. I don't know if I've ever welcomed you into the show. Uh, that name looks new to me, but thank you for being a member and have a great weekend yourself. And we'll look forward to these earnings numbers. And then we're looking forward to that big conference call. Um, and observe thyself. Uncle Bruce, have you seen the due diligence I wrote about your height on your Reddit page? Laugh out loud. I know there's a poll. There was a poll running there about how tall I was. Um, and there's been commentary often, but I haven't had the time to power down to just relax and read. This this weekend, I'll get a little bit of time, but I've got about, I think I've got eight people to talk to on one-on-one -on -one chats this weekend. So I'm going to be rather busy on that as well. Um, it is, uh, it is. Uh, I think I have 50 people booked going forward now on one on one. So that, that's taking up my weekends as well. But got to do it. Got to do it. Uh, just mumbling with Bruce, mumbling, bumbling, and stumbling. Hey, Bruce, do you play any instruments yourself? Uh, yes, I do, but not often. Um, nowadays, I just love picking up a guitar once in a while and just playing some chords. I'm just a chord player. I'm not a lead guitar kind of guy. I'm just... I'll throw some chords around and I'll whistle to myself a tune and and then my fingers get sore and I stop. <laughs> Not so young anymore, are we? No, we don't. Um, anyway, uh, later, guys. Um, uh, um, observe thyself. That was incredible. Wow, look at the uh, losers hitting the thumbs downs. My wife is going to be so confused when I put the Bruce documentary on for Netflix uh, in chill. Uh, <laughs> Uh, unbelievable. Thank you, guys. Uh, uh, what do we got here? All kinds of comments coming through. Thank you, guys. Uh, some emails coming in. Thank you. Those of you who have been picking up merchandise, I want to thank you again. We had a number, another number of sales today for product uh, on the Redbubble store. We have alerted, just so you know, those of you who are curious, because I know some of you asked me this, we have alerted uh, Redbubble about the fact that this is being knocked off and it's being sold on other pages that are not anything to do with this guy. Uh, they have responded, uh, Redbubble, they've responded to us saying, we are looking into this right now because they know, they know the number of orders I'm cranking out on this merchandise through a legitimate site that I have on Redbubble. Now they're gonna take a look at the other sites to see if they, I don't know what they do with them. They remove the uh, listings, they, they censure them. I, I have no idea what happens if you're caught, you know, cheating like that uh but i know that um uh, i mentioned this yesterday uh on the air i was mentioning the problem we were having with this with this logo and other merchandise of mine that people were pretending to be me um and a number of you came back to me with suggestions and solutions and we have followed those suggestions and solutions and it was a very seamless it worked very well uh jen actually handled it because jen handles the red bubble stuff by the way when you when you get one of these, you are telling Jen she's doing a great job. And uh, if you like Jen, you're picking these items up. Fabulous. I, I couldn't be I, I couldn't be happier because I mean Jen is a part of this channel kind of behind the scenes, and this is one of the things she does. And so thank you all of you for supporting my red bubble store um, and putting in an order for a cup or a t-shirt or whatever. Uh, some of you have made some beautiful like phenomenal orders and and again if you order a bunch of these items you get four of these i think you get 20 percent off or 25 percent off uh if you order more you get an even bigger discount uh same with shirts and you know so if there's several of you in the household that want to pick up uncle brucey stuff make it one order you know get, gang it up and then you'll get a bigger discount and it's like getting a getting you know every fourth item for nothing uh that that helps all right it helps you and it still helps me anyway uh can all Ken Alawazel, uh, any chance you could cover what happened to AMC today? Uh, the market manipulation was unreal. I wouldn't; it wouldn't break 14 all day until it tanked at the bell. That that's exactly what we were talking about here, Ken. Uh, Ken L, we were exactly doing that. Um, I was I was holding up this chart all afternoon. Well, not all afternoon, but several times this afternoon. I held this up to the camera, despite the glare on it. Look at that. That stock chart, it, it was like a flat, like a cliff up there. It couldn't go over 14 bucks a share all day long. Uh, 99 million traded here. Uh, as far as the aftermarket goes, what's it doing now? Let me check out AMC for you. 
Um, there it goes. AMC aftermarket, 1358. So it's worse. It's worse now. Uh, and it's traded $4 million in the aftermarket. So uh, GameStop, is, uh, AMC is not having a good afternoon, not having a good aftermarket right now. And I can't make heads or tails of what happened. Uh, the only guess I can make uh, that might make sense is that uh, there was a fairly large sell order that might have been millions of shares that the buyers just couldn't take out. They kept coming up to 14 to try to buy it. And they couldn't get it. And if anybody wanted out, they had to offer it 13.99 or 13.98 to get out. Thankfully, the $14 seller didn't seem to move down their sell order. They kept it there. And they were just sitting there with stock going, I want out of all, I want out, I want out. And, and, and all the buying that came in, which was $99 million, but not enough, obviously, could not take this seller out of there. What happens Monday morning? Will the seller come back at 14 again? Or will the seller come in at 1350? Or will the seller wait a while and see if the market recovers a bit and then comes in? If I were the broker for this seller, um, I would never offer a block like that at a set price. I wouldn't even let the street know that I was a seller. I would be offering stock in dribs and drabs to feed it out. Because if I can feed out stock at 14 to 14.25 instead of just sitting at 14, I'm getting the customer more money. And the more money my customer gets, the better off I think the customer is. And of course, the future of me being a broker for a client with more money is a better future for the broker. I mean, I'm motivated as a broker to, to max out the return, uh, but I would never offer stock like that and just keep it there. So to me, was this a, a, a broker, uh, not even a broker, was this a, a person that is selling stock themselves without the help of a stockbroker using a platform service and just putting in a big fat order to sell whatever number of shares at a set price at 14 bucks. And they just left it there. Um, not the way to do it. Not, even if you're selling your own stock, this is not how you're supposed to do this. But again, uh, where do you learn? Where do you learn this stuff? Um, I learned it on the fly. I learned it as a desk trader. I learned it from other desk traders, floor traders, stockbrokers, mentors business partners uh partners in the law firm uh, in the uh, law firm partners in the brokerage firm that i was part of i learned all these tricks uh this was this is a, this is brokerage 101 201 301 401 but here uh this is a disservice what happened here is a disservice to the company uh it's a disservice to all the shareholders um it's a disservice to the customer himself or herself they uh, limited themselves to what they could get for their stock, they really hurt themselves, and I'm just, um, I'm just puzzled by it, amazed by it that 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 took place. Anyway, I'm guessing that's what happened. I I can't uh, I can't be more specific than that. Justin, uh, I just want to annoy the trolls by tipping you. <laughs> Justin, thank you very much. Uh, we've now got uh, 133 downs and 2,800 ups. Uh, so guys, if you can throw the thumbs ups at me here, really upset these people. Uh, right now, we're at about a, uh, what are we at now? About, uh, what is it, 10, 20 something, 20 something to one. Uh, but if we can get up to three, 4,000 thumbs ups, we'll be at 25, 30 to one, depending on how many more thumbs downs come in. But when I when I ask you for thumbs ups, the thumbs downs do come in. I mean, they, they I, I wake them up too. But what they don't know or what they don't care is that if I get more thumbs downs and thumbs ups at the same time, all of this is added up by the computer at right now 3150 thumbs of some kind that's 3150 thumbs of engagement that actually promotes my channel even more so if the thumbers the downers actually move do more of this they're actually helping my channel become more popular which is kind of odd uh they're not going to bring in more people that hate me they're going to bring more people that have now heard about me and might like me uh because apparently 3,000 of you like me and 149 of you don't. And so we got uh, 20 to 1 going on right now on the up-down ratio. And so please come please come on here with the thumbs-ups for me and make that ratio look even better. Uh, and as I'm talking, three thumbs-downs just went away, and we're down at 147. And I want to thank the thumbs-downers from for taking away their thumbs-downs and maybe becoming thumbs-ups. I, I, I hope that's what's happening. Just trying to grow a channel here, folks. I'm just a YouTuber in a living room in Creston, just trying to, you know, be liked. <laughs> just, 
I don't want people to hate us, but sometimes there's not much we can do about it. Uh, 1353 on AMC, I just don't know what to say. Uh, why is it doing this um, uh, on the Friday in the aftermarket? That That is... That's confusing to me. I don't know. Uh, Justin, thank you, Justin, for, uh, you know, this donation. Uh, and Andre Andriano, hi, Bruce. I'm trying to become a channel member. I'm I'm new to the, all this stuff. How does this work? Um, Adriano, Andriano, you're probably trying to become a member using your phone, and it's not working, right? Uh, that's probably what it is. And they tell they tell me, the, the viewers I have, they tell me... <laughs> That if you go to my channel, um, you're probably getting this and you're not finding a join button. And I've been telling people if you go to my about section, maybe you can join there. And people go to my about section and they can't become they can't become a member there either. So there's a membership tab. Um, and I'm not sure if this is uh, there. There might be on the membership tab. You might be able to join. But they do tell me, that they being my intrepid viewers who really know technology like I don't, they seem to tell me to go to the upper right-hand corner um, and uh, you might be able to do something there uh, or somehow you, you go somewhere to make this work or you work this in a, uh, it's not a Windows mode, but you do it in a desktop mode or something like that. Uh, that might be the secret to making this happen. I've been telling people, go to a laptop and you can join me there. Go to my homepage on the laptop. You'll find the join button. It's right there. It should work. But, Adriano, I, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, thank you, Therese. Thank you. I have Uncle Bruce playing in all rooms. Um, uh, Bruce, a dude from Montana. You don't think the hedge funds have teams of people and bots to try to cause problems with you in other places like Reddit? Oh, that could be it, my friend. Uh, that could be very much it. Uh, they're targeting some of us maybe i you know i just mm, don't know uh i'm a I, i'm but a humble chimp with 32 shares uh with a 40 average who wants to get rich but is in no rush <laughs> okay uh who clicked the wrong thumb who who did that uh bruce whoopsie daisies <laughs> who says that i mean who's i haven't used that in 50 years who said who says that? Uh, uh jeff smith gamestop is now red uh 20 200 27 cents on the day I've got it at 199.02. Uh, it's jumping around on the aftermarket, I guess. Oh, you're talking about the. Uh, oh yeah, you're talking about the close in New York, uh, Jeff. You're way ahead of me, buddy. Uh, I'll catch up with you, Jeff. Just give me time, uh, maybe hours, days, weeks, months. But I'll keep up with you. Uh, yeah, two hundred dollars and twenty-seven cents is the final close on the New York Stock Exchange now. Adjust it down a dollar forty-eight on the day. See that right there? Here's the aftermarket. 199.21. That's what we're showing. Okay, Jeff. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Uh, you've alerted me to that. Diamond-handed apes, really? 150 hedgies are here. Come on, my, it could be it could be staff members, uh, but I, I don't think so either. I, I think what it is, it's it's viewers that are following YouTubers, and there's about I don't know eight or ten of us now, eight or ten channels that are covering AMC, GameStop, and other you know market things, and some of us have uh, 20,000 subscribers, 50, 60, 80, 100, 200 million you add it all up you've got maybe is it three million subscribers of which uh there's really only two million because they subscribe to multiple channels which i do uh so so maybe there's two million people here one and a half million that follow all of us and out of that uh a certain number of them perceived me as an enemy of the whole thing <laughs> because i gave my opinion on what I thought about GameStop. Uh, I mean, about AMC. And uh, that just wasn't going to stand. Uh, that No, we're not going to have that. You're not You're not going to make an opinion. I mean, who do you think you are, buddy? No, you've got to toe the line here. you got to be like the rest of us. You have to talk about um, uh, AMC and GameStop like everyone else does. Otherwise, you're an enemy of the state. And uh, enemies get, uh, get banished or get treated badly. And that's what happened. And uh, the, the piling on started on Monday and Tuesday, and it got kind of crazy. So what can I say? That's how it went. Um, and so here we are on Friday, and the channel has gone to a membership pro, uh, profile, and we've avoided all kinds of hate on this uh, on this chat. 
uh, space, which thank I'm happy. I'm happy with that. Mr. Weska, thank you for becoming a member. Uh, request desktop view. People are saying again. Um, I had to go to my PC to join. Says Team Bowman. Tim, uh, thank you, buddy. This is this is this is royalty here. This guy is a member of both channels, TWB and this one. Tim, man, I will I'll see you tonight, seven o'clock Eastern, on Traveling with Bruce for the sponsor member show over there because tonight is trivia night and I got the questions right here. I'm ready for trivia, buddy. I'll see you tonight, seven o'clock Eastern. Uh, DQ has become a member. I love DQ. Uh, thank you for coming becoming a member. Uh, Jorge, uh, Umberto Acosta de la Pena. Uh, thank you for becoming a member of this channel. Fantastic. No more than four. Thank you, you and Jen. Love you and your content. Such a great flow of information for me as a new investor. Thank you for saying that, and I'm I'm I will try to keep it up. I really will. Uh, Jose uh, Quispe. I became a member of Jose. Thank you, buddy, for coming in here. J JQ, you're here, buddy. You are the man. Thank you, sir, for becoming a member of this channel. My newest and latest member. This is beautiful. Uh, that's great. That's great. That's great. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the bot wars, my friends. Going to get worse, unfortunately. Uh, it's trade trades. Uh, it's trade trades. Uh, don't follow that clueless clown. You know what? Uh, I want to say something about Trey. I I, I want to say thank you to Trey, actually. So if any of you were, would be kind enough, the next time he's on, uh, send a message to him from me. Uh, because I think it would be better if a viewer of mine did this rather than you know me coming in. Uh, I want to thank him because uh, I think it was on uh, it was on Tuesday. Uh, maybe Wednesday, one of those two days, he did a video. It wasn't very long. It was kind of like two, two and a half minutes, two and three quarter minutes long. He did a video talking about uh, what had happened uh, between the AMC uh, story and what I had said and how uh, all kinds of YouTubers jumped on me about what I had said on, my, on the air on Friday. It was live on the air, and then I posted a clip on the Saturday uh, and it, you know, it hit Sunday or whatever it was. Anyway, he posted a video to say, I don't have a problem with Bruce. He and I are cool. And we are. Trey and I, Trey and I are fine. Uh, Trey and I, uh, individually, we have nothing against each other whatsoever. Uh, and Trey uh, is, is very respectful of my opinion. I'm very respectful of his. We both know that we have our passion about what it is we follow and what, what it is we're doing here. Um, and I know Trey and I will talk again on the air together, whether he's going to be a guest here, or I'll be a guest there. It will happen. Um, there's no hard feelings between Trey and I. The situation, though, is that between Trey's viewers and my viewers, there's a crossover to a degree. And a certain number of crossover viewers uh, viewed what I said. And mi they missed it on Friday, but they, they saw it on the Saturday video, I guess. Um, they interpreted my interpretation of where AMC is at corporately as a betrayal to Trey and a betrayal to the Wall Street bets people and a betrayal to all the redditors. And I, I'm just, I'm just a bad guy. And they then immediately went to the next level to say he's a shell and he's being paid by all the hedge funds because a guy his age. Uh, would have sold out, I'm sure. <laughs> and so that's how that started. Now, Trey is saying, uh, I don't think he's a shill. <laughs> I don't think Bruce is. I don't think Bruce in Creston, British Columbia, a town of 5,000 people, is a professional hitman for any hedge funds uh, against AMC. That, that doesn't add up too well. Uh, you'd think it would be a, someone a little bigger, a little bigger, bigger, powerful channel. Uh, just doesn't make sense. Anyway, so uh, Trey, uh, thank you for uh, for uh, standing up for me and and uh, considering me a YouTuber that just has an opinion, like you have an opinion, and we're both good. It's all good, Trey. No problem here. Never will be. Uh, same between myself and any of the other guys out there. Uh, we're all doing what we do, trying to interpret what we're trying to interpret trying to figure out what the heck is going on in a really fast-moving environment that is changing almost daily, weekly, and monthly, and we're just trying to wing it here. We're, we're doing what we can, uh, whatever due diligence we can get our hands on. 
but we none of us as youtubers control any of the market we're just commenting commenting on it uh some of us as youtubers do not have positions some do and that's cool too and and, and i respect any youtuber out there that comes clean to their to their audience that says i own stock in this and that's why i'm talking about this i, I have no problem with that i i don't if it, if it works for you as a viewer that the host of your channel is long the stock that you're following and that's good for you great um in my case i'm not long any stock positions but that's my choice and at this age that i'm at i'm not interested in playing uh, high volatility stocks and i don't want to own any stocks at this time because i believe as a play-by-play -play or a color color commentary guy i just want to call it as i see it and i have no restrictions to what i say uh, that's how i feel that's how i want to play it and that's just that's just me and for some of you or for some of the folks out there it was an unacceptable position you, you either are you either play the stock or you're not legit and that that's some people's position and i respect all of you who have that opinion on it but it's just not going to work for this guy so there, there you have it so trey it's all cool so if, if you're any, any of you out there who are watching trey uh I wish Trey uh, all the best wishes from this channel, and I, I'm wanting him to do really well. He's doing he's doing very well. His channel's growing nicely, and I, I'm hoping it'll continue, and I'm hoping that his AMC will go to the moon, and he'll make a killing. That would be great. All of his viewers, fantastic. Um, and I, I I have no ill will to Trey whatsoever. None. None. I'm, 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 all, I'm cool. I'm cool. He's a YouTuber like me, and we are tiny. We are small channels. Neither of us have a million viewers, subscribers. Uh, we don't, we're, we're not, and even then you're not a big channel. I mean, 10 million or more to count and we're not there yet. We got a whole long way to go. So Trey's got work to do. I've got work to do. Uh, we have collaborations to do with, our, with each other or others. Uh, down the road, there will be a lot of this interactivity. And uh, in the meantime, we just do what we do the way we do it to to move forward and continue on so there you go um i hope that i hope that is clear to everybody and if any of you can uh can uh, give him a shout out for me uh best wishes from this channel to his channel that would be great uh because i i i'm i'm happy you know being involved long term with these guys dq stock marks with bruce i'm a seasons i'm a steelers season ticket holder let jen know she has a seat at heinz field she just went, uh oh. I've taken her to one Steeler game. One. We went to Pittsburgh in February. Uh, it was it January, February 2008? Uh, uh, no, only five, once. Five only once in Pittsburgh. Only one time you went to Pittsburgh. No. We've been, haven't been to Pittsburgh twice. We saw them beat the uh, Chargers. Yeah. And then we saw them uh, beat um, Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah, but that was the same, was the, same the week year? after. Yeah. So we went to Pittsburgh. Uh, I gave Jen a Christmas present, surprise Christmas present, that we were getting on a plane on January the 7th or 8th of 08, I think it was, um, to go to Pittsburgh because the Steelers were playing the Chargers in a playoff game. Uh, the Chargers had, had played the weekend before. Whoever they played, they beat. Had to come to Pittsburgh to play Pittsburgh. And uh, we had purchased seats. I purchased seats uh, at the uh, in the end zone on the opposite side of the ketchup bottles. So the ketchup bottles are way down on that end. And uh, we were on the other end. And we were way up high enough that above our heads, we had the box seats hanging over us. So we had a roof over our head. So if it was going to rain or snow, we weren't going to get it if it was coming down. If it was coming at us or sideways, okay. But as it was, it was it was cold, but it wasn't uh, snowing, and we had a blast. We had a, such a good time. We watched them beat the Chargers, and I told her, I said, I will get us two tickets for the next game, which was the Ravens. And the winner of that game would go to the Super Bowl. I said, I'll get you those tickets. If you will go. But she said, no, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, we're staying in Pittsburgh anyway. We actually went to New York and then came back to Pittsburgh. And uh, she said, I want to be in Pittsburgh and I want to go to a sports bar to watch a game in a sports bar 
in Pittsburgh with with the peeps. I want to be with my peeps. And that's what we did. And uh, I don't remember the place we went to. Uh, do you remember the place we went to? No. But I thought they were famous for that sandwich. Oh, well, we've been to per Perlmutter Brothers, I think. Per Perlman Brothers? Pearl Bro you know that? If you're a Pittsburgh, you're a Pittsburgher, you know what I'm talking about. The place with the famous well, we've been there, but we didn't go there to watch the game. Right. We went there to eat, but they the game was being fit. We had we had a great time. It was we loved it. We we really loved it. Jen just loved it. And uh, uh she saw the last quarter of the game in the hotel room because she just wanted to be in front of the TV and because I don't and, share well. Because she doesn't share well because she's a hitter, because she'll hit, you know. So we had to get her away from public. Uh didn't want to start fist fights and bars. Um <laughs> And they won that game, and then they went to the Super Bowl, of course, and they won the Super Bowl that year. So anyway, um, that was the one time she was in Pittsburgh. So now we have a viewer here, DQ, who is a season ticket holder to a Steelers uh, to the Steelers. Oh, this could be trouble. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, you might get a knock on the door in the middle of the night. Hi. <laughs> Did you say something about uh, you have season tickets to, to a Steelers uh, thing? Is that what you said? Uh, I, that's what I heard you say. I Philip heard Haas. The other game we saw was in Cardinals in Arizona. Yes, we saw the Steelers in Arizona. That might as well have been a home game. We, that's right. We went to Phoenix to see a friend of ours, and we got two tickets to the Steelers-Cardinals uh, game, and there were 65,000 fans in the stands. 45,000 were wearing black and gold with the terrible towels. And it was like a home game in Phoenix. It was so cool. And they beat them, no problem. Philip Haas, thank you for becoming a new member. Uh, Bobby, you're absolutely right. He's a good guy. Trey is a good guy. I don't I don't have a, a problem with Trey at all. I like Trey. Trey, all right, definitely a high-energy guy. Definitely high-energy guy. He really is. Uh, Trey is sweet. He's just very hyper. He, he's, he's really, he's working hard. And uh, uh, way to go, Trey. He's doing great. Uh, Don Zeller. Well, Uncle Bruce, what's your favorite beer to wash down bagels? Uh, I don't do that. <laughs> Trey's just high strung. Um, we've got the stock now on uh, on uh, GameStop showing what um, one ninety nine here. Two hundred dollars twenty seven cents is the price of GameStop right now on the aftermarket. That's what we're showing right now, kids. Uh, one ninety nine sixty now is jumping. All right. Um, um, I watch you both. Uh, uh, nice to have multiple options. Right on. Uh, I'm Ron Burgundy. Is that me? Um, moving on. Uh, <laughs> uh, look, Michael, uh, personal fair value estimates on GameStop to our prior earnings, uh, $300 minimum. I do tend to agree with Mr. Bruce on the 10 time forward looking earnings on 800 to 1100 price target, excluding all else. Yeah, I don't know what the numbers are going to be for the earnings coming out. Uh, I suspect. The first three quarters are losses because we had the pandemic. Many of the stores were shut down for like six months, though. Although they did curbside pickup and they did online and all that, uh, in the last quarter uh, they had more in-store sales, but not at every location. But they are selling those game systems now, and they're having trouble getting them in. So there you go. There you go. So we'll see how the stock does on Monday with this and Tuesday. A trade is a good ape. Uh, Trey is a technical trader, uh, so a bit different focus on the same stock. That's right. Uh, in Labatt Blue or Molson Bruce, uh, neither. I moved, I also moved my AMC Gains too. Got a nice Brucey SPAC spread instead. Uh, Troy Clayton, we got a new member. Thank you, Troy. I appreciate that. Apes don't fight. That's right. Uncle Bruce, you rock. Can hedge fund managers sell off stock to drop the market enough so they can run so that they can then buy after a week? People sell. Okay. Can hedge fund managers sell off stock to drop the market enough? So they can then buy after the weak people get out. Well, that's been the plan, I think. That's what they've been trying to do since 346 a share or 348 a share about eight days ago, nine days ago. They tried to shake out the market and they, they have not caused 100 million shares a day of trading because of this. Um, and as these shares are sitting here in this 200 range, there's just a whole bunch of people picking this stuff up and putting it away. More buyers are, are coming in long for long-term holds. That's what I think is going on here. Sharks and the Jets, Montagues and the Capulets. Let's go. Apes never fight each other. Uh, Alps hate apes help apes. Uh, hard to get tendies when they fight. 
They can't handle the truth. Uh, it's not. I, I've got nothing against Trey or you. We are on the same team. We're trying to make money here. There are no sides other than the hedge funds. There's that. Uh, Trey is a highly intelligent, but he does not have 40 years experience in doing this. Both are good. Good points. Uh, Trey, Cav, uh, between the fundamental traders and the technical analysis lies the middle philosophy, the roaring kitty. Uh, okay. Uh, and uh, what else we got here? Like Harry uh, Callahan, Clint Eastwood said, opinions are like, uh, you know, those holes. Everybody has one. <laughs> I hear wedding bells. Uh, Kokanee, that would put all of Bruce and his four foot eight uh, on the floor, like 7%. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, Michael is in the house. Some kid in his 20s or someone with 40s years of industry experience. Easy choice for him. Kendra, anyone see Roaring Kitty's five tweets today? Laughing out loud, loving the cryptic messages. Javier, uh, poor Trey. He was so worked up. Aim is AMC going to 1408 to drop and stay steady at 14 and end under 14. Uh, it would have been a long day today, I'm sure. Ashley, trying to make money and uh, fun doing it is that simple. Uh, there are two sides to every bagel. Personal opinion, uh, T21, uh, forward hidden in the ETFs on Game 7, a lot. Potato, handoff, I'll wait for 800 minimum. Uh, that, that's code for something good, I think. Andy, uh, would any big moves happen in after hours on days like today? Or would it have been by 4 p.m. sharp? Uh, for the witching hour, it would have been 4 p.m. sharp. Uh, right now, whatever's happening is a setup for Monday morning. But uh, the big setup that I'm waiting for now is the annual report release, which I think is Tuesday. And then the uh, conference call, the big conference call with management to talk about the company. And that's either Tuesday or Wednesday. That's what I'm waiting for now. We'll see what's going on here. We can only control ourselves, our actions, beliefs, and decisions. We cannot control any of this in others or the markets. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me move on here um, to another. We got another member, Jay McAleer. Thank you for becoming a new member today. Love that. HS also has joined in. I hope you guys didn't have too much trouble figuring out how to become a member here. I know some of you are really uh, are really uh, having trouble here. Sitting Bull. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Uh, which of Uncle Bruce's SPACs do you like the best, folks? I would love more of the SPAC VACQ Rocket Lab and Mini SpaceX, new New Zealand based now in USA too. Uh, 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 Wizard Owl, you are the man, Uncle Bruce. Um, love defeats hate, and I'm not even a hippie. Uh, you're a good guy, Bruce says Jamie. Oh, thank you, Michael. Uh, Bruce, uh, just be you, okay? Just, just, just don't put on a put on, don't put on a facade. Just be you. Uh, there are only six worth anything, and your knowledge in the field is invaluable. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, I do what I can. Uh, don't know who Trey is. Oh, Trey's Trades. The name of his channel channel is Trey's Trades. He has a YouTube channel. He's got about 170,000 subscribers, maybe more now. He's he's growing. He's he's growing. He's been on longer than I have, I think. Uh, certainly live more than I have. Um, and uh, Trey uh, Trey is covering the markets, and he covers a lot of different stocks and uh, stories. And uh, he's on to the AMC. He watches he watches he watches GameStop too. Uh, I say cheers to you, Trey. Have a great weekend, buddy. You work hard this week, like I work hard this week. And I know you'll be working this weekend like I'm working this weekend. <laughs> we have Trey and I don't get days off. I don't think we both work all the time. And there are a, a number of other guys. There's Matt. There's Max. Um, there's a bunch of guys that are out there who are constantly just giving her. And uh, I I commend all of you guys for all the white the work you're doing and all of the uh, uh, videos you're putting up and all the research you're putting together. I commend you. 3,300 thumbs ups now on this channel. That is beautiful. 169 on the downside. We're kind of uh, not quite 20 to 1. If we can get another couple of hundred thumbs ups, we will be at a 20 to 1 ratio between thumbs ups and thumbs down. So if you thumbs, if you folks out there have any thumbs ups to spare, well, spare them now. How about that? Spare them now and get them up here. And thank you uh, all very, very much. Uh, fantastic that you guys are all, all here. Uh, beautiful. Okay. Um, what have we got here? Uh, um, okay. Da -da -da -da. We've got this. And, oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Uh, it looks like, looks like Redbubble has been able to shut down all of the impersonators of uh, Stock Markets with Bruce with regards to the offering of these items. 
Uh, this is really great. This is this is fast, and that's pretty impressive. But it didn't. It wouldn't take them long to figure it out because they would look at our channel and they'd go, "Well, these guys have been offering this now for several weeks. Those guys just showed up the last couple of days. I mean, hello. Uh, uh, and isn't this bagels with Bruce to do with this guy right here? Where they're they're not me. How they don't have a YouTube channel like that. So I guess what information was provided by Jen to Redbubble convinced Redbubble the we are eliminating those listings we're eliminating those items from those shops uh, I, I'm just so grateful Redbubble for taking care of us I appreciate it uh, and um, I just hope we don't get hit anymore but you know what can I say uh, there are people out there who are taking advantage of uh, or trying to take advantage of a hard work and YouTube guy just trying to get by I, I'm doing what I can thank you everybody uh, Anyway, there you go. There you go. Uh, I appreciate the fact that he could have walked away a millionaire and left everyone, but he's still with us on this. He's a good guy. That's a good guy. Right on. Uh, just to remember, hang in there, apes. It's the weekend. we got an exciting week ahead of us. Get plenty of rest. Eat well. Enjoy life. We're into the last 10 minutes of this show right now. Um, thank you, all of you, for being here all this week. I like the Bruce, and I like the stock. Hate is the hot stone you grab with intent at throwing at someone else. Um, well said, Uncle Bruce. Uh, Bruce, can we talk about how important it is to also be into someone into some ETFs for long diversification? Yes, uh, ETFs uh, can be a way to diversify, and uh, and uh, I have recommended one so far, which is the uh, the uh, SMH is a symbol, uh, and uh, you can check that one out at your leisure. Uh, Trey's a cool guy, and I watch him from time to time. Also says Sitting Bull. Uh, Corey, uh, Corey Payne says, I watched, I watch Andrew for information updates, Trey for analysis and Bruce for fundamentals, but I watch Brucey live because he is comforting and uh, we all bring our unique, uh, style to YouTube, right? We just do. We're not the same. We're all different. And, uh, the viewers that I attract are different than the viewers others will attract. And that's the best part about YouTube out there, guys. You're able to shop around for the channel that you like the most, uh, you like the second most, the third most. You got variety. You, you, you got, you know, all kinds of topics to go after. What a, what a great source of, of entertainment. And those of you who have found this guy to be uh, comforting or enjoyable or, or what have you, I, I'm, great, I'm grateful for it uh, because I can tell you there are relatives of mine who just don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> they're going what they they watch you they what what do they say about you you know you know who they don't don't they know who you really are i mean i've known you for years man i'm related to you and i know you how what are you talking about that you have a hundred and four thousand subscribers that watch you a lot in the last two months they've all found you like oh don't they know who you really are and what you're really like? I've seen you. I've watched you. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> I guess you could say that if you expose this guy to 20 million people, 104,000 will like him. Maybe that's the way to do it. I don't know. I don't know. Have I been exposed to that many people? I, I don't know. We'll see what's going on. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Uh, Wally, uh, that is honorable, Bruce. I think your dad and upbringing for you expressing that you don't hold a position on any of these stocks. There are only a few of us of, of us left, I think. There you go. Thank you. Uh, Barry, Jam, I watched both you and Trey. Trey also said early today, Uncle Bruce is cool. Differences in opinion, but we are all apes, he said. Uh, he just, But he just ate a pizza and couldn't hold a candle to your bagel. I love pizza too. Uh, I just don't eat it for breakfast. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I love Trey. I love all the guys. I have no problem with any of them. No trouble. I wish all the people were like Uncle Bruce. Uh, who's uh, who's Trey's? What's Trey's channel called? Trey, Trey's Trades. Trey's Trades. T-Bone Steelers. Uh, Michael, Javier. They're going to pop, I feel. Uh, Trey's Trades is the name of the channel. Cav, Wizard Owl, then you wish everyone was Canadian. Wally, my son was born in Pittsburgh. Go Packers. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> my friend was at that game, oddly enough, uh, the Chargers game. Interesting. Uh, Julie, I got into GameStop by following you, Bruce. Right on, Julie Dahl. Where where did Miss? Where did my T go? Where did my where, uh, T-Bone was wondering, where did my T go? Uh, Troy, um, Bruce, why would there be so many shares sold after market? 
Uh, why so many? Um, what do we got right now? 30, 302,000 volume right now. Uh, example, uh, Tell had 49 million on the day, a 20 million, 28 after market. I know it's highly shorted. Uh, you know, Troy, I can't answer specifics like that. I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, hard to say. Uh, Jay McClare, you're you are the goat, Uncle Bruce. The, I know what that means. That means the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the goriest of all time. No, the greatest of all time. That's what they say. Uh, I, I'm humbled by that. Diamond handed ape tart. Uh, Corey Payne, Andrew, good too. I like both. All the drama is silly. Trading is trading. All different types and opinions. It's all good. Uh, people need opinions so they can make up their own minds. Kendra C, thanks, says Cav. Uh, Wizard Owl, uh, Cav. They are really, uh, are they really this nice? <laughs> uh, Michael, uh, two tickets to Pittsburgh. You know the rest, baby. Um, uh, who is it? Who is it? Your SMH will work hand in hand with BLOK over the next few years. These two ETFs are super safe, long place because of the direction we're going into blockchain. Interesting. Uh, Kendra saying good vibes. Sitting Bull, Trey knows how to analyze the stock trading action and the charts and the patterns, etc. And you can learn how to understand such things from him. Trey recommends learning from a guy named Rainer, the Rayer, Rainer Teal. Rainer Teal. Uh, Matthew Pearson has become a member, the latest member to join this channel. Welcome, Matthew, to the club. Glad you are here. I'm from Philadelphia, so I was surrounded by hateful people most of my life. <laughs> what do gorillas have that no other animal has? Uh, question. Um, uh, go Chargers from Matthew, 619 for life, baby. Um, Cav, a wizard owl. I've only been twice. The stereotypes downplayed their kindness. I wasn't in a massive city, but everyone knew I was from the U.S., and they still treated me like family. Unreal time. Um, Invisibles, uh, baby gorillas. Uh, that's what they have. They have baby gorillas. That's what no one else has. There you go. Uh, we got Chargers playoff games. Are a heck a hell of a fun. They're a hell of a fun crowds. They're sure. Uh, uh, Primantis, uh, Primantis, oh, Brothers, Primanti Brothers is where you get that famous sandwich in Pittsburgh. Is that the? Uh, is it the uh, uh, pepper? Um, uh, no, what's it? The not pepperoni. It's um, it's. it's Deli yeah. French yeah, pe pastrami. I think it's pastrami and French fries yeah. with gravy on top of that. Is that right? I'm not even. I'm not. And, or cheese everything and coleslaw. I mean, it's just it's such an everything on top of everything, and then you need like a big bib to handle it all. I mean, it's wild. It's yeah. just fam Pittsburgh famous, man. Yeah, pre pre Primanti Brothers, Primanti Brothers. Right on. Okay, there we go. Uh, buy and sell host says Genos. Pramonti Brothers, Pramonti Brothers. This is obviously from a few minutes ago. I'm so behind on my comments. 16 minutes back I am. Jose, I personally hold both. Would hate to see either company go out of business. Would like to see my son go to the movies and buy his own console when he's older. Frank S. is saying, Eagles. Uh, I want to give Bruce's bagel a shout out, but I don't have $25. Uh, Paul Pena. Um, <laughs> Sitting Bull, uh, why do folks holding options have to report on Thursday? which options they exercise when the options expire tomorrow. Uh, some part, some people say to me, Mr. T or Mr. Sitting Bull, they say to me, no, 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 you can do it until Friday. It depends on the brokerage house. So I think it's a broker by broker thing. And so you got to know your broker uh, to figure out. Um, BWUSAF, a soft French bread, meat of your choice with vinegar, coleslaw, tomatoes, and fries all smashed together. That's the sandwich at uh, at uh, at the. Well done fries. Oh yeah, we say well done fries here. Absolutely, we like them crispy. You and Jen loved going to the sports bar. What about transforming GameStop stores into GameStop bars? How about how about that? Make them all Pittsburgh Steelers centers. I don't know. Entirely possible. DFV is playing us and is bought and paid for. You think, Mike? I don't know about that. Ryan, Uncle Bruce, what is Jen's favorite place to travel to? Oh, or she simply happy to be by your side. Ha ha, the Ryan Army. Jennifer is a rock star getting a T-shirt today. Uh, Jennifer, uh, uh, well, you know, we kind of, wherever we go, we we go. I mean, I love she loved Rum Point in okay. the Cayman Islands. She That's loves going. She loves going to Rum Point at the, in I the Cayman Islands. She loved Berlin. She yeah, likes very nice. very nice Berlin, she says. Yeah, yeah. We, we enjoyed that very much. I liked going to Washington. She she loved going to Washington to the Smithsonian museums. She liked that a lot. Um, I like England because of all the ships. 
the uk england all the ships we saw she loved that a lot wants to go back for more uh yeah we, we we're not done yet we're we're nowhere near done yet uh what can i say uh we're down to a minute i gotta get going here uh thank you everybody for being here um I'm just catching up with these comments uh uh thank you i think i've caught up with them too which is great uh thank you guys so much um uh the my bagels with bruce scoop next shirt just hit the mailbox yay all right ashley way to go you got your shirt fantastic um and uh let's see michael uh what was that comment where's that my comments on the effect of the dtcc ruling short interest declaration declaration thoughts will be enforced michael we're going to find out real soon i think we will find out much sooner and i sure hope it's what i think it's going to be uh mike uh we love you bruce no matter what thank you guys bye bye bruce and friends see you monday be well catch you later i think we might be uploading a video tonight uh, or tomorrow just keep an eye open for that uh that's also happening we got i got my editor working and we did upload a video today check it out i uh, hope you like it uh we got lots going on with the channel so you'll be able to see new stuff coming from your uncle bruce through some short bits diamond handed Ab what turns on your lights the full moon is calling the fever is high and the wicked whispers and moans what song is that from jen uh, yeah, okay. the, uh what turns on your lights the full moon is calling the fever is high yeah. and the wicked whip wind whispers and moans it's the eagles um one of these nights one of these nights one of these crazy crazy old nights yeah great song andy hey just want to say thank you times a thousand i don't know how i would make it through this game stop saga without you here thank you andy so much all of you thank you so much uh bruce needs a comic book show on saturdays uncle bruce can look at the market through bagel glasses diamond uh and eagles uh dan hammer bruce i have a good night uh, weekend please let us know when we're doing trivia night Dennis uh, Bra Bra uh, became a YouTube member. Thanks, Dennis, for joining us. Uh, if you become a sponsor member of Traveling with Bruce, you can join me for trivia tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern time with the gang over there. We always have a good time Friday nights. I know some of you have already joined that club, which just blows me. You're members of both channels. You guys are incredible. But, yeah, TWB tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern, trivia with the uh, sponsor members of Traveling with Bruce. Uh, come on over. Say hi. And play some trivia. No cheating, though. You can't Google them. No, no, no cheating. No cheating. All right. Um, there were 1 million plus share purchases on both GameStop and AMC in the afterwards. Do you think those are friendly long bulls or short bears loading up for attacks next week? I do not know. I'm not sure if that's much, that much really traded or not. Uh, we've got 311,000 shares on GameStop changing hands, 321,000. AMC, I'm showing, well, yeah, 7.2 million. So, I mean, GameStop traded a lot on the aftermarket, but it's 1363. It's under pressure tonight, and I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe that's still someone getting out. Anyway, I don't know. Thank you, guys. Um, uh, <laughs> Bruce, don't worry. Brian will be off his pills this weekend. Okay, uh, have a great weekend. Go Cowboys. Love the SPACs video. Uh, Victorola and two albums, one for Eagles. We'll listen tonight. Good night, sir. Good night, Mrs. Jen. Karaoke with Bruce. Ha, ha, karaoke with Bruce. I call Metallica. Say your prayers, little one. Don't forget my son to include everyone. Buy and hold. We're getting to know each other in chat before our world travels together. There you have it. Okay, guys, I'm gone. This is it. The two-hour limit is over. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great weekend. And keep an eye on this channel for updates. And uh, join us at uh, the other channel if you can for trivia tonight at 7 o'clock. Okay, guys? Thank you. Take care. And bye for now.